beautiful lady you see here is called Grace Ame Obi. Uh, I'm a Ghanaian by nationality. Uh, I was born in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, my parents lived there, worked there um, with Pfizer. And so I went there, schooled there for a bit, and came. we came to Ghana and continued my education. And then after my sixth form, well, before the sixth form, when I was in school, my mother had all kinds of diverse businesses. One of them was a hairdressing salon. Mm. And so after a while, she decided she lost interest in the hairdressing salon. So I took it over. I was in high school. I was in uh, Form 3, uh, about 15 years of age. Mm. And so I took over that salon, would open it when I returned from school, because I was in boarding school. And my clients will wait for me to come back to start their hair. And so the interest was, I just realized that, look, my passion was in making people beautiful and happy. And uh, obviously, I'm a woman, so I understood that. Um, after my sit form education, I went to college in England to study beauty therapy. That was in the 70s. And uh, it was a new concept, even then, in the 70s in England. Uh, coming to Ghana, it was virgin. So it was a virgin. Uh, profession. Known, yeah. Yes, um, a lot of people were professional hairdressers, but to add the beauty therapy aspect to their business, you needed a special training. It's a specialization that you must be trained in before acquiring that. It's more science-based, you know, profession. And so when I acquired it, I knew the niche was in Ghana for me. And so I rushed back and started with my bag behind my back, moving from shop to shop trying to educate women on how to care for their skin and selling them alternatives from my bag. And uh, back in those days, a lot of black women were bleached. They were using all kinds of wrong products and they had all kinds of horrible skin conditions that were just begging for remedy. And so instantly I became famous. Um, I started with, again, I went, uh, uh, got space, got a couch, started my clinic he came to two four six the president's wife was there um i i have worked on clinton's wife hillary i have worked on i've touched the queen of england i have worked on all kinds of different people in the world young and old um but you see i don't have a target in my business because um uh, I handle skin conditions, and so whether you are young, a baby, or an adult, or the president's wife, I still would handle you. So it, my business cut, cuts across uh, well, all kinds of skin yeah. Yeah. conditions. And um, well, from one thing, you go to the next. Uh, as the clinic was growing, I needed help. There was no help in, in terms of uh, human resource or skilled labor. So I decided, why don't I start training people? Mm -hmm. It will give me you know, more room to expand. Resources, and yeah. so I started a school. I started with five girls, and now constantly I have 400 students in school. 400 students. 400 yeah. students each time, you know. It's, I could have more students, but I just want to keep it at that number. Mm -hmm. And I can have the quality and the control over the school. And um, from there, I said, I've added on importing products for. Um, clients and using products for the professional clinic was becoming too problematic. And so we started our own line, um, Forever Care Skin Care Line. And uh, we've gone from strength to strength. We've added the makeup line, we've added the professional line. Um, all our products are therapeutic, made for specifically for black skin. I, I, I would say I'm an authority on black skin when it comes to the aesthetic world. And uh, I've been on different fora talking about black skin and uh, how the sun can damage it because we have this misconception that sun and uh, black skin are bad fellows. It's wrong. And so we try to change that perception to how we must care for our children of school going age right because yeah. the damage is recorded and will be exposed or manifest in 10, 15 years' time. That's what the sun does to you. So we've, I've done a lot of education. I have a beauty magazine, health and beauty magazine. Uh, but my passion is for the NGO, my NGO. Oh, yes, yeah. I don't know about South Africa, but yeah. typical Africa African. that I know, 
the problems or the challenges are the same. Access to finance, high taxation, high interest rates between 25-35%, sometimes 50% interest rate, lack of human resource, the right one. We have a terrible uh, land tenure system, so getting space to build anything or to do anything is difficult. And so renting property to is difficult, it's very expensive. And so these were all challenges that every startup business faces in our country. And if you have to import things, you pay almost 100% import duty on them. And so you are like constrained to start. Are you willing to start with all these mountains of problems or are you just going to keep chipping at the mountain till you get to the top? The decision is yours. Um, so you have to strategize and plan your business in such a way that you take baby steps, one step at a time. So I started with my bag in my hand and trying to develop, grow a client base, a solid client base that I know that if ever I got or laid hand, hands on any money, I at least I'm assured of my clients, that my customers will come to me in wherever I am and have my services, you know. So you need to start, you need to strategize. Money is not cheap, yeah. and so you need to really take your time and make sure that you have the knowledge, you have the tools, and you have the personality, the character to deliver what you are yeah. trained for. So already in your case, you were trained, so you knew the industry. Yes. You probably got some better knowledge by going abroad and yes. getting prepared to South yes. Africa, sort of to, to Ghana. The passion first. Passion first, yeah. Now, was there any stage during your journey where you thought, this is too difficult for me, I, I probably I won't make it? Was there any doubt somehow that you might have foreseen or at least experienced? Well, you know, unfortunately for me, I'm a very bad loser. So I don't play any games. You know, I always must win. That's me. And so I would think about, I would think a, a, a process through and be clear in my mind before I start my journey. And so I, and a, a journey can only be successful out of passion when you have passion, then determination, dedication, everything. And so once that is what you want to do, I just focused on it and did it. It hasn't been easy. I've gone through two fires and two floods. I had my business bent down completely to ashes. I was left with my clothes on my back. That was in 1990, and I was pregnant with my third child. Mm. You know, and ha we had to move to my father's house because the business was in the house. In the house, yeah. We had to move to my father's house for about six months to a year to rebuild the business. And I've grown from that level to this level. And so there is nothing, I'm a, like I tell you, I'm a bad loser, so I, loser. I have to make it at all costs. And so there is nothing that would deter me because that's what I do, that's what I love to do, that's what I know to, how to do. Yeah. And when you talk to me about anything, I'm not interested. I just want to do what I know how to do, and how to do best, yeah. that's all. We're gonna come back to the question that says, if you were to paint a picture about your business currently, for someone who doesn't know it, how, what, what kind of size is it now? But let me start by say, asking a question. Where was the turning point? I mean, you start somewhere probably pulling it a bit hard, but there should have been a turning point somewhere in your journey. If you were to recall, was there a pattern or a, a, a particular deal, a particular decision that you made that signified a turning point in your venture? I'm a bad loser, but I'm a very sp spontaneous woman. Okay. And so I sit and something clicks in my mind, and I start putting the maths together. I said, I must go for that. Okay. You know, so for me, the turning point is just there every day. As, as long as I can lay on my bed and wake up in the morning and feel that, hey, I'm alive, I'm happy. And then my mind goes, okay, I have this challenge at work, I have this, I have that. What can I do to change the situation, to improve on it? So it's a continuous process. Yeah. It is not one event. If I want to say my turning point, there are hundreds I can't even remember one. Yeah. But you must know that you get the opportunity and the turning points every second. I've just got it, the turning point here. Who would see me if I hadn't, you hadn't given me this opportunity? The, the audience that I'm communicating with now would not know anything yeah. about me. Yeah. So that is life. You seize the moment and make the best of it and project yourself in the right light. Yeah. 
the support uh, as a woman obviously in this particular case you do indicate that there were children coming on the I'll say pipeline so to speak did your husband support you and, and to what extent did he play a role in, in probably making your dream a success I would say which one is the tallest mountain in the world is it Everest they, they always say that Everest. is who my husband is yeah. he's the one that I lean on he's 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 my everything he's my friend and my enemy because he's the one that pulls the ring and says, Please, you, are, you are too much ahead of your time. And pulls the ring and I'll turn back and fight and fight and fight. But, but always see wisdom because I know he's the voice of wisdom in my life. And so our business is a family business. He's very quiet, but he just, he has a one track mind. He just does what he has to do and that's it. He doesn't, he's not interested in all the variations that I bring, I come along with. And so he just does his work and say, please be we don't have enough money for that. You don't have this. It's always cautious. And without him, I, I'm sure that I would have tumbled over being in a rush to achieve everything. So many, yeah. Yes. And um, again, we've raised, we have three children, a son and two daughters and uh, two grandchildren. Uh, my son is a pharmaceutical and cosmetic scientist, as I said earlier on. And he's in charge of the factory now. He makes all the miracles and all the things there now. And my daughter that I'm here with is a molecular biologist by profession. And uh, he helps with the quality control and the projection of the products in our business and all that. The last one is uh, in the University of Exeter now, studying accountancy and business management. Uh, and she always laughs at us and says, look, you do all the work, I'll count the money. <laughs> you know, so it's a wonderful family. We work together. My daughter-in-law works in the marketing department as well. And, uh, I love, I love it. I just love my family and I love my work. And I have 85 people working for me. And it's like, FC is a big family. Yeah. And so we, you see people who started coming there when we started, still coming. You know, so it's, 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 it warms my heart when I see very old clients still, you know, assessing my yes, service. Yes. Yeah. Now in terms of footprints, are you only in Ghana or you've moved to other countries as well? Uh, thanks to my training college, the young ladies who come training in the college, 20%, about 20 25%, come from the sub region Nigeria, Burkina Faso, you know, Cote d'Ivoire, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Gabon, Guinea. And they come uh, to study the beauty therapy. And we, because we train them with our products, they live with our products yeah. and they become our local distributors in their very yeah. yes so that is the strategy and uh, currently what we have started is um, to also teach them how to invest we started a business salon management uh, class and uh, what we do is uh, as you pay for the tuition you pay half of the tuition fee extra as an investment in yourself at the start of the program and so we take you through marketing skills and sales skills and so you start marketing the products from day one and we promise you that by the time you finish your program your money should become two thousand for you just your own money to start your business when you step up because i don't want anyone to walk out and find it difficult to find money to start their business and it is it is catching up like wildfire and I'm happy. You know, these are the things, the fulfillments or the satisfaction that I get from my job. It's not about the money. If it's about money, my husband is supposed to look after me. Mm. I don't have to look after myself according to African <laughs> standards. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, true. you know, I'm, uh, for me, it's a hobby. Mm. I enjoy it. It's, yeah. it's, it's, the money is a reward I get at the end of it. You have been nominated as one of the recipients of the iWork Award in 2010. What does that award mean to you? You know, I've, I've received over 30 awards in Ghana and uh, several international awards. But this particular one is humbling. Uh, this is a congregation of very intelligent, powerful business women packed in a room and dialoguing not only about their own successes, but how to reach out to the next generation. And uh, it's humbling because, um, because I also impact knowledge and skills to young people and uh, uh, deprived ones as well. 
I can connect and relate to the general feel, general uh, realization that we are the mothers of the world. And if there's going to be any change in the future for the world, it is going to be through us. Ah. We are the conduit for change. And it is us through, uh, through us that the babies come. And with one mind and one purpose, we can change the world. And that fe feeling resonates among all of us. It is, it is powerful. It is powerful. And uh, I am so grateful for the U.S. State Department nominating me for this award. And uh, I have made very, very genuine friends in this conference. I've made several business links. Uh, the organizers have done a phenomenal job. And um, we are already talking about having a small African chapter and see how we can mentor and grow people, young ladies and boys across our borders. And the, it's the genuineness of the expression that is humbling. Normally people will just get up, talk and go. But this one is, is very, very touching. And I'm so grateful for it. Give us a bit of a, a, a description of the size of your business in, in whichever way that you receive it. Uh, my business is um, it's a one, two, three, four, uh, four floors. Yeah. That's the headquarters. Uh, and then um, the factory is uh, on two acres. And then. Um, my house is small, it's very small. That's where I take the business decisions. Uh, I have um, uh, uh, three branches in different locations for different purposes, but I have several beauty spots where uh, students who pass through our school, the best ones are recruited and started, you know, we finance the spot. We pay for the space, we give you products, and we monitor you, we grow you, you know, under our uh, uh, brand, yes. And so that we have several, in the malls, several places, in all the regions across Ghana. And so, again, it's about selling our products, but it's about giving them jobs to do, and put, starting them together. So, um, we are all over. FC is all over. It's a household name in Ghana. We, I do a lot of um, motivational speeches. I am on several boards for the youth. I believe in the youth. Uh, they keep me young. And so I gel with them. I nightclub with them. I eat with them. I hang out with them. Yes, they are the future. They, uh, ladies, my age group, would not bother too much about my products. Yeah. You know, but the young ones who are up and coming, who still who are looking for husbands, who wants to be beautiful, who are in jobs that they must look smart, are the ones that will be interest, interested in my product. So of course, I must be with them and educate them and make them comfortable and have easy access to my product. So um, I have a wide. I do several things. You know, I'm. I work on several boards for the government as well. So it's here and I'm always traveling, but I still have control over my visa because I have able people that I work with and I trust them. Yes. Where to from here? You, know, you spoke about your foundation amongst other things, but broadly speaking, where to from here? I'm aiming to retire in two years' time, purely because I want to focus on the foundation. I want to seriously look at how to uh, grow the foundation to be like uh, a house where I can get all these child prostitutes. It's very serious in Ghana. Very young children are going to prostitution because of hunger, they are hungry or because of they need basic things in life. If you are a mother and your kids are grown, you have to take other people's children and look after them. It's just our duty, period. And so I want to develop that. And then uh, I want to also finish my test book for on black skin for beauty therapy trainings. I want to also complete my training manual for the illiterate practitioners because yeah. they can't read. So you must do diagrams and stuff to be able to educate them. I want to. So I need. I would need full time for. These are very serious projects, and so I'm hoping 
to retire in two years and to focus on this part of the business, knowing very well that I have my children to carry on and do better in their time. So you'll be sitting at the chairman or chairman? Yes, seat yes, on, definitely. On, on I'll on never, I still need my salary. <laughs> I still need to survive. But from what you're saying, your retirement is to retire from the co-operations of the FC, but to actually spend even more hard work on the foundation. Because that is not salary, that is charity. Yeah. That is charity and, you know, it's peaceful. You know, it's peaceful because you have all these people looking up to you for salvation. Yeah. And you know that you are their hope and their inspiration. And so that, that is God's work. That is God's work. And now let, let's talk to a girl child out there. I mean, we know in Africa, girls are probably still seen in better commas inferior somewhat. They compromise their future for the boys to go to school and the like. Let's give them hope. What would be the word of encouragement to a girl child, especially those who want to be something in the future, be it entrepreneurs, be it studying, be it professors and doctors, as a word of hope and, and, and inspiration? Let me be a bit controversial here. I keep telling you, the first uh, uh, sentence I tell a girl is, um, you know, God made us the way we are for a reason. He made a mistake when he was making the man. So he perfected the act when he made a woman. So why should you feel inferior? We are, that's why he can entrust making procreation into us, into our bellies. We grow, we grow the world. Mm -hmm. Why should you feel inferior? If you don't raise that boy child the right way, then you have done wrong by God. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm proud to be a woman. Be proud to be the girl child. Go into yourself, identify your God-given talent because we are all made to succeed. Yeah. And we have God in us. And God says, be a beauty therapist, or be a cleaner, or even be a, the, a, a, a debt collector. You have to, he's giving you brains. How do you utilize your brain to make that into a thriving business? Why can't you set up a cleaning company? You don't have to be doing it yourself. So it's the processes that education takes us through, equips us, and then gives us the ability to discern where to take our next steps. You know, no one, no boy is better than a girl. You just take a look at the guys you are in your area or the, your, the boys in your class. You always, the girls are always smarter. They do everything. So when, at which point in life do they pass us? Because we marry older men. And you know, we are, we've, our culture has trained us to say, yes, boss. Yeah. And so Submissive. we think that we are not. Mm. That we are who we are when we believe we are who we are.